Hello world, and we are back. My name's Kyle Fischel, and this is going to be episode 75 of my poker vlog. Before I get into the hands of the previous week of playing poker, I have a few quick announcements. First, my rad poker rating has continued to improve. I'm trying to get it up to possibly grandmaster status, but... You know, we'll see how that goes. Next, I will be returning to Jacksonville for a Best Bet live stream on March 18th. So I'll post a link on my Instagram when it's actually happening, but let's get into some hands. First interesting hand. A middle position player opens to $25. I'm on the cutoff with King 10 of hearts. I choose to just call playing a suited king in position. One of the blinds calls, so we're going three ways to a flop of ace seven five all hearts sometimes poker is really easy the preflop aggressor bets 25 dollars again as i have the literal nuts i don't really want to scare anyone away i choose to just call this time the blind calls as well so we're still going three ways to a turn card which is the eight of spades as it doesn't change anything i still have the nuts hoping my opponent bets again unfortunately he checks to me this time all right i'll do the dirty work myself fine I bet $80. The blind folds and the preflop aggressor calls. So I'm really hoping for a, a non-pairing, non-connected card on the river. The six of spades isn't pairing, but it's definitely a very connected card. When my opponent checks to me, it's time to think about sizing. This to me seems like an all or nothing board. If my opponent has a flush, he's probably gonna call any size bet. If he has a straight, he's probably gonna call any size bet. If he has an ace with a heart blocker, he might level himself into calling a big bet and he might fold to a medium sized bet anyway. So in my mind, there's no reason to go small with this one. So I bet $300, nearly a pot size full polarizing sizing. Unfortunately, my opponent finds a fold in this one. So we'll take the win, but probably could have got more with a smaller bet. Next interesting hand, with a $10 button straddle, there's two limps to me. I'm in middle position with ace king of clubs. I raise to $50. Well, it folds all the way to the first limper who raises to 200. Ugh, a limp back raise, never really a good situation. Even more traumatizing is I lost a tournament in Tampa the week before with ace king and aces, but they can't have aces every time, can they? No. So I ship it all in and my opponent snap calls. Wasn't expecting a snap call. Wasn't really expecting my opponent to have aces here. We are actually in great shape. Either way, we win that one and and build quite a big stack very early in the session. Now after this hand, it was almost as if someone hit the switch from winning to losing on me. <laughs> because I couldn't win another hand at all for the rest of the day. A uh, example of this is there's a bunch straddle. I'm in the big blind with eight, seven of hearts. Definitely gonna call the $10. No really reason to raise. This is a hand I'm happy to play multi-way. Well, after three callers, the button raises to 60. Nowhere near the sizing good enough to get any types of folds. So as I'm the first caller, I know if I call, we're gonna go five ways. When I call the 60, we do go five ways to a flop, which I'm really excited. Until I see ace, king, nine, only one heart. I just didn't connect in a way meaningful enough to continue. When the preflop aggressor bets only a hundred, really small bet in relation to the size of the pot, I just don't have a big enough piece of this board to continue, especially with three other people that act behind me. And when eight or nine or 10 of these hands happen in a row, it, it really dwindles your stack. Now the easiest fix is just tighten your range and stop playing crap suited connectors, but, but that's not fun. So for the next two hands, I did not catch them on camera for some different reasons each one. 
but they are quite interesting and they're definitely hands of note. So first hand of note. Similar to the last hand, there is a button straddle and I'm in the big blind. This time with jack four of spades. Going to limp a suited jack as this game has been playing, you know, five, six ways every single hand. And you just need to catch one to be able to get a, a big payday. Well, in this hand, it actually goes seven ways to a flop. Everyone limped except one player who folded. So seven ways to king, queen, ten, two spades. Well, the small blind bets right out 55. And with a draw this big, there's just no reason I wouldn't push the action. No one should really have a set here as no one raised. No one should really have a goofy two pair. No one should really have ace jack. I guess jack nine is the only thing I'm really concerned about. But even if I'm against a monster, I'm more than happy to take my nine flush outs and six straight outs that aren't already counted in the flush outs. So I raised to 175. A middle position player thinks about it for a really long time before folding. Odd. And then the cutoff goes all in for about 600. When it folds back to me, in the words of a previous main event champion... Daniel with the aces all in. Big draw. Big draw. I have a draw. And a call. Big draw. Card is a queen for the straight. And he. It's almost the exact same situation. That's funny. Similar to Mr. McKeon, I'm definitely going to just go with this hand. Too much equity. But in this particular situation, my opponent had king queen off suit. And. I go brick brick. I guess on the bright side, I saved my one time for when I'm on the final table bubble and I really need it with this hand. So you got to look on the bright side. We still have our one time. We'll use it later. Next hand of note. Because after that hand, and I didn't film it, when shortly after I could pick up pocket aces, I felt pulling out a camera real quick would be a pretty obvious tell that I have a strong hand. So with pocket aces under the gun, I raised to $35. There's three callers as, you know, not even straddled, just just two five under the gun, 35, three callers, standard Florida poker. So four ways to a flop of seven, four, two hearts. Having the ace of hearts, I'm really not too worried about flush draws or really anything on a board so unconnected and having most of it locked all the way up. So I go for a very small sizing, only $50 on the flop. Well, the small blind is the only caller. When the turn is the five of clubs, the small blind just snap open rips it on me for 400. And I actually take a few seconds to think about it because a few obvious straights just got there. But my thought process was if you happen to just call with eight, six, and then call and get a gut shot i guess i'll just take my full house and quad outs and and double you up if i need to so doesn't take me too long to snap this one off i just stare at my opponent waiting for him to show his hand he doesn't really show anything until the river hits and he he says straight and i was just kind of irritated that he turned to straight and then just ripped it on me but actually the river was a three and he had five six off suit I'm losing to a bird. The run bad is here, you know. I, I was running really, really good for the last few weeks, so bound to catch up to me, and that this was this was part of it. All these hands happen Friday night. Saturday, we go back for a 1-3 game. It's a little bit smaller of a game, but plays almost the same size. First interesting hand of that session with a button $10 straddle. Yes, we do 1-3-10 in this game. With four limbs to me, I'm in the cutoff with pocket tens. I should probably be raising this most of the time, but given how bad I was beaten the night before, maybe I overcorrect a little bit because I choose to just call this one and set mine and play in position. Button checks. We go five ways to a flop of ace, king, king, two spades. When it checks all the way to me in the cutoff, I think this is an opportunity to turn my hand into a bluff. I'm really just trying to get some weak aces to fold that would limp and then limp call one bet because if I turn a queen, jack, or spade, there's plenty of barreling opportunities I can have even if I'm called on this bet. So I bet $30. The button calls and then the big blind raises to $125. Cannot really continue for a check raise of that size, especially in a 1-3 game. This isn't 2-5. This guy probably has it. I don't see a check raise bluff into other people that have shown aggression at this stakes table. So we let this one go. My opponent does show a king, and a uh, good hand to that guy. Next interesting hand. I'm once again in the cutoff, this time with king jack of spades. When it folds all the way to me, I raise to $15. Trying to build a pot, play a hand in position, strong suited king, we're good to go. Well, only the big blind calls. When the flop is king jack nine, two hearts, 
Flopping two pair, I'm pretty happy to bet multiple streets here. There's plenty of heart draws that can pay me off. One pair plus straight draws, plenty of stuff like that. So when it checks to me, I just continue for the same sizing. I bet $15. And my opponent raises to 40. Not quite sure what he's trying to say he has. Like, I guess exactly Queen 10 would check raise this board, fearing hearts and wanting to get as much money as they can in now while they have a good hand. However, my hand's just too strong to fold to one raise. So we're going to continue at least one time. So we call. When the turn is the five of hearts, my opponent bets $85. Kind of a weird line to check raise pot and then bet pot on the turn. Like, you have to combine both of these bets together to really identify what your opponent's trying to tell you his story is. On the flop, a check raise could easily be a straight, but then to pot it a second time on the turn when you're out of position, when the obvious flush gets there, seems like a pretty big mistake to me. I think if you had a straight here, you would have to slow down at least to bet maybe half to three quarters pot, maybe even check called. I don't really see a pot 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 with a made straight additionally on the flop my opponent could check raise with a flush draw but then would he bet pot when he makes his flush i really don't think so a hand that actually makes a lot of sense to me is like ace king king queen or jack queen with one heart and possibly ace queen one heart a hand that check raises pair plus flush drop or pair plus straight draw and then continues because they improve to a flush draw seems to be the only thing that really makes sense to me in this particular spot so my plan is to call now and call any safe river as i should have the best hand here most of the time unfortunately the river is absolutely atrocious and this time my opponent only bets a hundred dollars now if we analyze his line if he continued a pot size when he made a draw and now he bets small he's pretty much saying he has like ace king ace of hearts even if he's going for some super thin value with a flopped straight or maybe pocket nines those still beat me so i can't call this bet so i fold and my opponent's nice enough to show me king queen king of hearts the runouts are not going our way today, but that is completely all right because we have ace queen offsuit. With one limp to me, I make it $20. A late position player calls and a limper calls as well. So we are going three ways to a flop of queen 10 7 rainbow. When it checks to me, never really gonna not bet top pair, top kicker on this board. I bet $30. One player calls all in for less and a late position player calls as well. So we are going three ways to a turn card, one all in. When the turn is the nine of hearts, it's not the worst card in the world. Not really what I want to see. I think hands like king, queen, queen, jack, jack, 10, things like that will be more than happy to pay off a second bet. So when it's checked to me, I bet $50. Not really going to slow down with top pair, top kicker, just because the board got a little bit scary. Well, my opponent quickly raises to two hundred dollars yeah i can't really continue again as he's pretty much saying he has a straight or two pair or a pair plus flush draw he can be pretty balanced here and definitely has a nut advantage over me so i really can't continue on this one and because there was one player all in he actually has to show and he had king jack so he turned top straight nice hand again and a final hand of note an early position player raises to fifteen dollars there's one caller and i'm on the button with 10 nine of spades well the wheels have come off it is time to three bet i make it 45 dollars both players call so we are three ways to a flop of ace nine four two hearts when it checks to me i think about continuing but I believe either one of these players could have an ace rag and would just be so sticky that they just wouldn't get away from it. So the fact that I do have a piece and I don't really expect an ace to fold, I think this is a pretty standard pot controlling check back. The turn is the 10 of diamonds. We have finally made it there. Well, the middle position caller decides to go all in for 130. Sounds good. Could have either one of the flush draws. Could have ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack, any of that. And I have two pair. Let's go. And when the river is the eight of clubs, my opponent shows ace nine offsuit. Yep, two pair over two pair. Not a, not a good turn card for me, but is what it is so for these two days of poker the results come in at distributing two thousand and seventy eight dollars to the wonderful players at orange city i give these people 138 dollars every hour i play with them and 
that equates to about 27 big blinds an hour. Yeah, I ran, I ran pretty bad. Didn't really play all too well. The biggest hands that I lost, I was actually happy with how I played them. But, you know, an, an easy remedy to this would be just play tighter and raise more. It's not really the funnest way to play, but it is the most profitable. So just gotta tighten the range a little bit. And this little hiccup's not really gonna slow us down. There'll be more to come next week.